So now that we know something about what controls rates of primary productivity in the ocean, and we know something about the, the seasonal cycle of physical and chemical and biological processes in the ocean that control productivity, let's look at how productive are the oceans as a whole. And I think you'll be surprised at what you find. As it turns out, each year about 103 billion metric tons of carbon are fixed annually in the world ocean. That means that phytoplankton are actually performing gross primary production, photosynthesis, to the tune of 103 billion metric tons. About 45 to 50 billion metric tons of that represent net primary productivity. So that's the amount after the respiratory needs of the organisms and themselves have been taken into account. That 45 to 50 billion metric tons that are produced in the ocean is equivalent to land production. So in fact, the oceans are just as productive as land environments. Now, you may think, well, why should that be surprising? The oceans make up 70% of the world anyway, so the oceans should be, in fact, more productive. Maybe we should think that the oceans should be less productive. But think about this. Light penetration through the ocean is certainly much smaller, much shallower than light penetration on land that doesn't have to worry about um, sort of water removing light. And the concentration of nutrients in the oceans is far less than the concentration in nutrients that we find on land. And think about this. The total biomass of phytoplankton in the ocean is only about 0.2% of the total autotrophic biomass on Earth. How is it that such small numbers and such a small amount of biomass can account for half of the productivity in the world? In fact, half the oxygen produced in the world comes then from the ocean. And ocean, the world ocean then, is just as productive as the land, even though it has far fewer, much for, far fewer, organisms that are doing the producing. Well, the answer is something called turnover time. And the fact is that phytoplankton can divide very rapidly and produce very rapidly. And when a phytoplankton cell divides in two, a zooplankton cell might, a zooplankton might eat it, or it becomes food very rapidly. So by turning over and dividing very rapidly, what we call turnover time, phytoplankton can supply half the productivity of the entire globe. That's an amazing fact to think about. If we look at where primary production is occurring globally, we can see again that land environments are pretty high in their productivity ranging from, in this scale, from 0 to 800 um, grams carbon per square meter, of course. The Amazon rainforest is very productive. The central regions of Africa and other regions of Indonesia and Australia, Central America, where we have um, tropical forests and those kinds of things. But in the ocean, there's very few areas that are productive. There's only a few areas that even get into the green, the North Atlantic, is one place, the Southern Ocean, down here we have um, some productivity around the tip of Africa, equatorial regions, a little bit more. But in fact, most of the ocean is, relatively speaking, a desert. There's very few primary producers in it and very little productivity. But it's just the sheer size of the ocean and the sheer speed at which phytoplankton reproduce and divide that they're able to contribute half the world's productivity. If we look at the world ocean in terms of the seasonal cycle, what we see, and this is for the entire world ocean, that it really doesn't change too much from one season to the next. Now, is that a surprise or not? Why would the seasonal cycle not change when we just said there's such dramatic differences. Well, this is for the entire world ocean. So when it's winter in one place, it's summer in another. When it's spring in one place, it's fall in another. And so looking at the total amount of productivity for the entire world ocean in terms of grams of carbon per year, we can see that July to September is really the most productive, but really it's not much different from any of these other seasons, largely because, again, we're talking about the entire world ocean.
if we look at different regions of the ocean, we do see um, some, some very striking differences. Oligotrophic oceans are places um, really in the middle of the ocean that don't have a lot of nutrients. Surprisingly, they contribute 11 times 10 to the 15 grams of carbon per year. Mesotrophic, which are sort of medium enriched in terms of nutrients environments, by far contribute the largest proportion. So in terms of biogeographic regions, oligotrophic, mesotrophic, or eutrophic, which is has the highest concentration of nutrients, we can see that somewhere in between is the ideal state. And largely that's probably for two different reasons. Probably because mesotrophic regions make up that sort of boundary between the uh, coastal waters and oceanic waters, still lots of nutrients, but not influenced by some of the terrestrial processes that, that reduce light intensities and those kinds of things. Um, whereas in eutrophic waters, because we have all these other kinds of things going on, and because we have such an abundance of phytoplankton to the surface, it really becomes self-limiting and self-shading. When you have a lot of phytoplankton around, there's not gonna be much light. It's not gonna penetrate very deeply. And this uh, table illustrates that quite well. One thing that might surprise you, and I alluded to this earlier, is that coastal regions that have kelps and seaweeds, the benthic primary producers, contribute very little. In fact, one times 10 to the 15 grams per carbon per year, um, as opposed to 48 and a half for the rest of the ocean. So we can see in terms of global production, kelps and seaweeds are very low, but again, I want to emphasize that kelps and seaweeds are important locally um, for particularly uh, kelp beds and providing habitat for many other types of organisms. So you can't always just look at the numbers to come to conclusions. If we compare terrestrial environments or take a look at terrestrial environments um, and compare that back to the, the previous table, table 13.5. Remember, this 48 and a half times 10 to the 15 grams carbon per year in the world ocean. We get about 56.4 times 10 to the 15th grams carbon per year in terrestrial environments. And you can see, and you can go back and compare tropical rainforests are really still the most productive region, though not as productive as mesotrophic uh, oceans, and so on and so forth, savannas and Deserts, of course, having very low productivity. Here's agricultural activities. And it gives you some idea and some way of comparing different kinds of terrestrial environments with what we see in ocean environments. Okay, so let's take a sort of review. The average annual total net primary productivity of the world ocean is about 48 and a half times 10 to the 15th grams of carbon. So Every year, about 50 tons, a billion ton, metric tons of carbon are produced in the ocean. In the terrestrial environment, we get a little bit more, about 56 billion metric tons of carbon per year. And even so, the world ocean with only 0.2% of the total biomass, autotrophic biomass, ends up being almost as productive as terrestrial environments. So the upshot again is that the oceans are just as productive as land. It just does so in a different way with a different set of organisms and a different set of rules really, physical and chemical and biological rules that govern the productivity of the ocean environment.